Good evening. Welcome to the CWIT Awards and Graduate Recognition, Recognition Ceremony. Thank you all so much for being here. Um, thanks to those who are here in person. We appreciate you coming. And also thanks to those who are joining us remotely by live stream. Thank you all for being here. I want to say welcome to all our students, um, especially our graduating seniors who we'll be honoring tonight. I want to say welcome to family and friends of, of all and all the special guests of the students that we're honoring tonight. Thank you for being here. Welcome to members of CWIT's advisory board, our faculty and industry mentors, our donors and supporters, and our campus partners. Thank you for being here tonight. And most of all, welcome to this year's CWIT Community Award recipients. We're so glad you're all here. My name is Carolyn Seaman, and I am honored to be the director of the Center for Women in Technology, or CWIT. Um, you may have seen CWIT's mission and vision up here in the back wall a few minutes ago, but in summary, CWIT is in the business of changing the world. Our mission is about making the tech workforce more diverse, more equitable, and we do that not only by helping a diverse group of students prepare to enter that workforce, but also by equipping them to be change agents once they get there. But I and the rest of the amazing staff at CWIT cannot do this on our own. Tonight's event provides an opportunity for the CWIT team to recognize and thank many of the folks who help us do what we do and help us make a difference for our students. And we'll be recognizing our amazing students tonight too, in particular those who are graduating, who are ready and equipped to change the world. And also recipients over the last year of special scholarships that have been made possible by Friends of CWIT. So let's get started. We start tonight by honoring a very special group of students. Students, of course, are why we're here, right? Um, why we do what we do, and at CWIT, we talk with our students a lot about our values, the CWIT values. They are academic excellence, professional excellence, inclusive excellence, and personal excellence. And all of our students work very hard to exemplify these all the time. But a few stand out and have been chosen as award recipients because they have excelled at embodying these values in everything they do. The Student Academic Excellence Award goes to a student who has developed a lifelong love for learning and discovery, not only in the classroom, but also through applied learning and co-curricular experiences. This year, in fact, we have two award recipients, Faith Matioy Galt and May Lian Vader. Faith is joining us virtually, but May, please come up to the stage. Malian is a graduating mechanical engineering major and CWIT scholar and has worked as a research assistant all four years. She's also been known to manage up to 26 credits in one semester successfully. Her love for learning has helped make the CWIT living learning community where she is the RA this year a comfortable place to put academics at the center. Faith is a graduating computer science major and cyber scholar who has taken full advantage of the CS curriculum by taking courses well beyond her major requirements just because she wants to learn more. She has a 4.0 GPA and has worked as a teaching assistant for CS courses as well as the AI for All program. Congratulations to Faith and congratulations, Melian. The Student Professional Excellence Award recognizes a student who demonstrates the knowledge and tools to effectively navigate their careers and to be change agents in creating technology workplaces that are diverse, equitable, and inclusive. This year's recipient of the Student Professional Excellence Award is Maria Qureshi. Maria is joining us virtually tonight. Hi, Maria. 
Um, Maria is a graduating computer science major and CWIT scholar and is involved in numerous groups all across campus, lending her leadership skills in a variety of contexts. She has interned at organizations like PricewaterhouseCooper, attended tech conferences like the Sof uh, Society of Women Engineers Conference, and led at nonprofit organizations like CodeHer. Maria is also the current president of the CWIT Student Council, where she has been a leader in establishing an amicable and safe environment where everyone is comfortable to share their thoughts. Congratulations, Maria. <laughs> Inclusive excellence means that, like UMBC, CWIT strives to be a community where people across all identities feel included, valued, and heard. The Student Inclusive Excellence Award honors a student who helps us do that by exhibiting bravery and vulnerability and engaging in healthy and inclusive communication. The recipients of this year's Student Inclusive Excellence Award are Franco Maxi and Avi Glassman. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Franco and Avi are both joining us virtually tonight. Franco is a cyber scholar and Avi is a CWIT affiliate and both are computer science majors. They have worked together to lead this year's Allies Practicum, which is a practicum for male identified students in CWIT to learn allyship skills and, and to learn about being an ally in the tech world. Leading this practicum as Franco and Avi have done is impressive enough but this year, there have been staffing and substantial programmatic changes to the Allies program, which has made it even more difficult. But Franco and Avi have worked very hard and thoughtfully to put together a meaningful experience for our practicum students. They truly care about CWIT's mission and how they can contribute to it as individuals and through helping others to become better allies. Congratulations and thank you, Franco and Avi. At CWIT, our students share with each other and support each other through all kinds of challenges. The recipient of the Student Personal Excellence Award is someone who has learned to become their own advocate and to face difficult situations head on, while also understanding when and how to seek help. This is someone who acts with integrity, treats others with dignity and respect, and takes initiative to develop as a leader throughout their time with us. This year's awardee is Courtney Cavan. Courtney, please come up to the stage. <laughs> Courtney is a graduating chemical engineering major and CWIT scholar who shines as a leader in running our peer mentoring program. She has found a way to succeed and thrive in the face of the bumps and obstacles she's encountered in her college career and has helped others in the community to grow as leaders. Congratulations, Courtney. I would just like to thank the CWIT community for always making sure I was aware of all the other opportunities out there for me when one path wasn't working out. And I would also like to thank my family and especially my parents for always telling me that I could do it when I said I couldn't. Good evening, everyone. Very good. My name is Erica DeRamo. I am one of the assistant directors in CWIT, and I have a couple things to share with you today. First, the Center for Women in Technology oversees three scholar programs, and the oldest one of these is the CWIT Scholars, which accepted its first cohort of freshmen back in 2002. Since then, 232 CWIT Scholars have graduated from UMBC and they are now valued alumni, well-placed in the tech workforce across the country. The CWIT Scholar Program is now funded 
institutionally by UMBC, and we are very grateful for the university for maintaining that support over many years. But the CWIT scholars would not have come to be without the support of early donors. And they saw the potential and the need over 20 years ago. These include a variety of organizations, both small and large, as well as individuals. Many are still supporters of CWIT. One, Joan Corman, was the founder of CWIT in 1998. And so now I have the great honor of celebrating this year's CWIT Scholar graduates. I'd like to take a few moments to share some words to the C17 and C18 graduating CWIT Scholars. You are a group of scholars who are brave, intelligent, kind, compassionate, skillful, and persistent. You are the group of scholars, and it's okay if I get choked up, don't hold it against me. You are the group of CWIT scholars that have demonstrated time and time again the meaning of family, support, and grit. Whether it was surviving calculus, chemistry, physics, or capstone, you all made it through together. You have always respected and been in awe, excuse me, I have always respected and been in awe at the resilience and strength of the Seawit scholars I see before me today. There have been so many wonderful memories with each one of you. You are an impressive group. You have been peer mentors, teaching assistants, student council leaders, researchers, K through 12 engagement leaders, You've taught in our first year experience course, been SGA senators, hack UMBC organizers, RAs, best of CWIT leaders, and you've joined countless of committees. And just in case you weren't busy enough, you were also part of AICHE, dance team, club soccer, SWE, chess team, chemi car, orchestra, and so many more things that I can't even list up here. You have thrived academically and professionally. What I am most impressed by is your personal growth. You have gone above and beyond to stretch back to one another and others in the UMBC community. For this show of resilience and kindness, I thank you for letting me be a part of your journey. Congratulations to all of you for not only surviving during these times, but thriving. We are so proud of you and cannot wait to see how you change the world. I'd like to ask all the CWIT Scholar graduates from last December to this May to please stand and create a line along the side here. And when I call your name, I'm going to ask you to join me up on the stage. You are going to receive a gift from CWIT as well as your graduation cords from Dr. Seaman. When you're done, please don't leave the stage. I want you to stay here in the center so we can get another group photo. It is my pleasure to share with you all the CWIT Scholar graduates. Bailey Wolf, Courtney Cavan, Danielle Sharp, Elizabeth Balmer, Emily Wang, Jenny Lenhoff, Jessica Schneck, Kelsey Chestnut, Laura McAllister, Maria Qureshi, Mara Chowdhury, and Mae Vader. Please, everybody, give them a round of applause.
Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Greenwood and I am the other assistant director in CWIT. It's great to see you all here this evening and that we can have this event both in person and virtually. Um, so I'm here to introduce our Lockheed Martin scholars. Some of CWIT supporters and donors have given specifically to provide for scholarships for CWIT affiliated students. One such donor is Lockheed Martin, who for several years now has provided funding for a cohort of scholarship recipients, as well as support for general CWIT operations. Many thanks to Lockheed Martin for this support. Tonight we recognize and honor the recipients of this year's Lockheed Martin scholarships. I know many of them couldn't be here with us tonight, but if some of you are here, I'd like to ask those recipients to come up to the stage using the stairs to your right, and we'll take a photo. Um, so this year's Lockheed Martin Scholarship recipients are Sultana Abdul Karim, Namso Ashiagwu, Jaren Alam, Neveha Brockington, Hia Dariwal, Ellie Dove, Zachary Irvin, Brandon Feldman, Ahmed Ismail, Venza Isolin Hamilton, Ellen Kim, Victor Lee, Babatunde Ogundokan Ayanda Jr., Sage Raziel Garcia, and Sabrina Wolfman. Our T-Site scholars are transfer students who began their higher education journey at Maryland Community Colleges, then chose UMBC as their graduating institution and CWIT as their home base here at UMBC. The T-Site Scholars Program has been funded by the National Science Foundation since 2012, for which we are very grateful. Dr. Ireland will be sharing her thoughts on the T-Site graduates, as well as read their names for us via video. Hello. My name is Dr. Danielle Torres Ireland, and I am Associate Director of the Center for Women in Technology. I'm also the program lead for the T-Site Scholars Program. I would like to share a few words regarding the graduating T-Site Scholars. T-Site stands for Transfer Scholars in IT and Engineering, and T-Sites are high achieving transfer students from Maryland Community Colleges who study computer science, computer engineering, and information systems here at UMBC. T-Site scholars bring a wealth of perspective, maturity, and expertise to the CWIT community. They are upperclassmen who have the distinct experience of navigating higher education across multiple contexts and are savvy networkers and go-getters. T-Sites have excellent reputations among faculty and staff as responsible peer leaders who are adaptable and resilient. They are known to be engaged in multiple co- and extracurricular projects and to be pursuing many different certifications to advance their careers. It has been my absolute pleasure to advise the T-Site scholars during their time here at UMBC and in CWIT to learn about their journeys and to support their dreams. T-Sites, each one of you is uniquely qualified to accomplish all that you dare to pursue, and I am confident that you will do just that. Graduates of the T-Site Scholars Program, as I call your names, please stand and join us on the stage to receive your graduation cords. Daniela Eisman, Joshua Elekwachi, Prabhin Bandari, Daja Daja, and CJ Hagdu. Congratulations. In CWIT, we could not do all that we do without the support of valuable partners both on and off campus. Excuse me. Our partners help us to serve our students in so many ways and support our activities and giving their time and talent to maximize our impact. So we now honor the recipients of CWIT's Community Awards for Outstanding Campus Partner, Alumni Partner, Research Partner, and Professional Volunteer, who have all made valuable contributions to CWIT's mission. Our campus partners collaborate with CWIT staff in many ways to help us achieve our mission and serve our students. This year's outstanding campus partner is Anne Airy. Anne, please come up if you are here. 
Um, Anne is an assistant director and academic advisor in the College of Engineering and IT. She's an invaluable resource to CWIT and has helped us navigate many policy or course scheduling concerns for our students. I have personally emailed her several times in one-on-ones with students with questions. <laughs> um, she's put hundreds of hours over and above her duties as an academic advisor to help us with reading scholar applications and interviewing prospective scholars. Anne, we depend on you so much and we're delighted to congratulate you on this award. One of CWIT's strategic areas of activity is educational research, in particular on promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion in um, computing and engineering education. Our research partners on campus and our collaborators from many different institutions help us to contribute to the scholarly and um, into the, the scholarly literature and better understand our own impact. This year's outstanding research partner is Dr. Virginia Byrne from Morgan State University. Unfortunately, Virginia has to join us virtually tonight, um, but she is an assistant professor of higher education and student affairs at Morgan State University's School of Education and Urban Studies. She's collaborated with us on several research grant proposals aimed at understanding the impact of the pandemic switch to online learning, particularly for underrepresented students that were already vulnerable to academic marginal marginalization. She's not only a scholar of the highest quality, but also a friend of CWIT who cares deeply about our mission and helping educators understand how to make educational spaces more inclusive, equitable, and impactful for all students. Congratulations to Virginia. Our alums hold a special place in our hearts. All of them are important to us and are doing amazing things in tech. Many of them are generous with us, contributing their time and their talent to give back and help us achieve our mission. They help with recruitment, choosing new scholars, networking and mentoring events with our current students. Um, the, the recipient of this year's Outstanding Alumni Partner Award is Dr. Lillian Johnson. If Lillian is here, please join us on the stage. Lillian graduated from UMBC in 2013 as a CWIT scholar and a chemical engineering major. She completed her PhD at Cornell and is a postdoctoral researcher at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST. She's been involved in scholar selection by interviewing potential scholars, participated in networking events, and is an industry mentor. Congratulations and thank you, Lillian. Um, thank you so much. I'm honored to be awarded for my contributions as a CWIT alum. My time as a CWIT scholar was so valuable, not only to my academic success, but as, as I hope you all have experienced yourselves, but for my personal and professional development through the CWIT community. As an alum, I've been happy to be given the opportunity to come back and give back to this community. Um, from mentoring to attending CWIT events, I always look forward to every interaction and it is a joy to work with every student. I learn as much from the students I interact with as they learn from me. And thank you again for this award. I'm so proud to be a CWIT alum. I'm proud of everything you guys do here. Thank you. See what counts on the generosity of many people, as is obvious tonight. There are special folks who believe in our mission enough to gift us with hours of their precious time and their involvement in our activities. Having such volunteers allows us to do so much more, and we are grateful. The recipient of this year's Outstanding Professional Volunteer Award is Amber Croxford. Unfortunately, Amber was called away just today on a work travel um, trip, and so she can't be with us here tonight. But Amber is also a UMBC alum. She was in com a computer engineering major and she was a CWIT affiliate while she was here. She went on to get a graduate degree at Johns Hopkins and is currently a program manager at Northrop Grumman. She's interviewed prospective scholars for us during scholar selection. She's been on a women in tech panel and been in a, gu a guest in the women, gender, and information technology course that our students take, led taught by Dr. Ireland. She's also helped our practicum students in industry mentoring prac with interviewing skills. Congratulations and thank you to Amber.
Well, Dr. Hrabowski is not here today, so someone has to say, good evening. And then you know what happens, good evening again. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll assume that that has sufficient volume. Uh, my name is Anupam Joshi. I'm uh, the director of the Cyber Scholars Program, and I'm privileged to be here today to congratulate all of you who are graduating, specifically the cyber scholars. I'll put on my other hat. I'm the chair of the Computer Science and Computer Engineering Department, so I'm also privileged to congratulate all of you who are CS or CE majors um, that are graduating. Cyber scholars is younger than Seawood scholars uh, by about a decade. So it was in 2013 that we accepted our first cohort of people. And it was made possible because a couple of pager that some of us wrote up with the help of our colleagues in the Office of Institutional Advancement convinced Dr. Herbowski, who in turn convinced Wes Bush, then Northrop Grumman CEO, to invest in this vision that the field of cybersecurity could be changed by creating a new generation of leaders that embodied the inclusive excellence mission of UMBC. And for that support, which has continued, for all of you who are cyber scholars, most of your scholarship money comes from uh, the support that Northrop Grumman has provided. We are deeply, deeply grateful for all that Northrop Grumman has done to support not just the scholarships, but some of the operations of the CWIT Center. I guess it's time now to recognize, um, you can see this big list, but it's time now to recognize the Cyber Scholar graduates and Cindy. Yes, so now it's my pleasure to recognize the Cyber Scholar graduates. As I looked at the list of names of this year's cyber grads, many memories came to my mind. Most of you I've known since your freshman year when you became scholars, associates, or affiliates and lived on the Seawit Living Learning Community. Others I got to know more recently when you became scholars as sophomores, juniors, or even seniors, or took cyber practicum as an affiliate. Regardless of when you joined the Seawit community, one thing is true of all of you. You've inspired me in some way. I appreciate how much I've gotten to know you, especially through our conversations and our one-on-ones. I learned about things you've had to overcome to reach this point of graduation. I've witnessed your personal and professional growth. We've laughed and sometimes even cried in my office. I've gotten to know you not just as students or as future leaders in technical fields, but as people. And that's why I know you'll do great things. Five of you are taking your talents to Amazon Web Services in Virginia, Texas, and Washington State. One will be joining Meta up in New York City. A couple is staying closer to home with our great partner we've talked about tonight, um, Northrop Grumman. And um, one of you has the exciting distinction of being the first UMBC student to get a Fulbright Award to get a master's in the UK. Uh, regardless if that's your path or another path, um, we know that, please know that we're very proud of you. We hope that you'll come back and contribute to the community, attend the events, give back to the um, scholars that will follow you, and tell us all about your amazing work and impact that you're having. I'd like to ask the Cyber Scholar graduates who were able to join us in person tonight from um, last December through this May to come on up to the stage using the stairs over here, uh, and Dr. Joshi will give you your cords and your um, and your pad folios. So the cyber scholars who've graduated in December and will be graduating this May are Abosi Akioyemin, Curtis Bird, Priscilla de Almeida Faitosa, Emily King, Swathi Krithavasan, Chris Lanthier, Faith Medioy Galt, Jennifer Mejia, Ainsley Ogero, Nithya Prakash, Lakshmi Varanasi, and Colin Beeson.
As we've mentioned before, some of CWIT's supporters and donors have given specifically to offer scholarships uh, to CWIT affiliated students. And some of these gifts help students close the gap between the amount that CWIT can offer them as part of a scholars program and the cost of attendance, while others help non-scholars who are part of our community to fund their studies. These donors give in this way for many reasons, and each has a story to share about why supporting students and CWIT is important to them. I'd like at this time to ask all of the CWIT donor-supported scholarship recipients who are here, who are joining us in person tonight, to come up to the stage using the stairs to your right and then gather up here for a photo. So this year's scholarship recipients are Shania Reese, recipient of the Diane E. Wright Scholarship funded by Net Craftsman. Priscilla Giameda Feitosa, recipient of the Bedwell and Warfield Scholarship made possible through a gift from UMBC alumni, Alexa Bedwell and Tim Warfield. Ruth Ann Delinka, recipient of the Elizabeth Bowers Scholarship provided by longtime CWIT supporter, Elizabeth Bowers. Eldana Tedesi, recipient of the Francis Adozi Memorial Scholarship given by George Onyenyenwu in memory of his niece. Emilian Chuosi, recipient of the Marion White Scholarship, provided by another longtime CWIT supporter, Marion White. Sandria Niavi, recipient of the CWIT Donors Scholarship, which is made possible by the generosity of many, many donors over the last year. And finally, Paige Nair, recipient of the Caroline DeSoco Scholarship through a gift from CWIT alum, Caroline DeSoco. CWIT and cyber affiliates are active members of our community who aren't in one of our scholars programs. Affiliates participate in our professional development and community building activities, among other things, serve on committees, and fill some of our leadership positions. We'll now honor this year's affiliates graduates. I know that tonight, um, two of our affiliate graduates are with us in person, and I would ask you to come to the stage and receive your cords as a gift from CWIT. I'm happy to see both Jess and Esma here today because they have been affiliates since living on our, oh, you can come right on up. So Esma Hassan and Jess Adams are um, the two who are here with us today. And the other graduates are Anya Hosseini, Hosseini Emma Hunter, Tahila Levin, and Emily Sale. And Esma and Jess have been so involved with CWIT. I've been seeing their faces at our events for four years, even through the pandemic, stayed involved with us virtually, and even saw them on campus every now and then um, last school year. <laughs> so it's wonderful to see you. Thank you for being here, and congratulations. So mentoring is a vital part of the support that CWIT provides to students in our community. And so tonight, we end our program by awarding the CWIT Community Awards to those mentors who have been deemed exemplary in their ability to demonstrate CWIT's values while actively supporting and mentoring our mentees. Peer mentors are students who volunteer to share their wisdom that they've gained throughout their time at UMBC with new students, scholars, and affiliates in our program. This year's exemplary peer mentor is Kelsey Chestnut. <laughs> K 
Kelsey is a computer engineering graduating senior and a CWIT scholar. She's particularly recognized for her good advice, especially about work-life balance and how not to burn out. Her mentees have valued all of her advice throughout their first year. Congratulations, Congratulations Kelsey. Faculty mentors have also helped their mentees throughout their first year, although many stick around much longer after that. Faculty mentors help navigate the academic and professional decisions that they have to make and help them plan beyond the next semester. They also help new students learn how to interact with faculty members and how to understand that faculty are people too. This year's exemplary faculty mentor is Dr. Jamie Gerganis. Prof G is a faculty member in the Mechanical Engineering Department, as well as the Associate Director of Engineering Education Initiatives in COET. She's also the Director for the Center for Integration of Research, Teaching, and Learning in the UMBC Graduate School, as well as the Honorary Faculty Coach for Women's Softball Team. According to one of her mentees, she is a role model and an inspiration for women in STEM. She redefines engineering as she emphasizes the importance of human aspects of the sciences. Congratulations, Prof G. Our students are also assigned an industry mentor. And this person accompanies them throughout a year-long industry mentoring experience. Industry mentors provide valuable advice about career planning and preparing for entering the tech workforce. The recipient of this year's Exemplary Industry Mentor Award is Ms. Kimberly Davis. Kimberly is an IT project manager at the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid Services. One of her mentees wrote about how much she appreciates Kimberly and how Kimberly encourages her mentees, speaks the truth, supports them, and holds them accountable. Congratulations, Kimberly. Just briefly, I want to thank C. Witt for this award. Um, it's truly an honor to receive this for something that I greatly enjoy. And I'm so proud of you, Shania. Thank you for connecting me with such wonderful women. So proud of you, Shania. Right. So last Sunday, the College of Engineering and IT at UMBC, affectionately known as COET. It's the college that houses CWIT, as well as all the academic departments to which our students belong. Uh, COET held its annual COET celebration here on campus last Sunday, and part of the program was the recognition of students who had been chosen by their departments for special awards. These awards including outstanding senior awards and leadership awards from each department. Listed here are all the members of our community who received awards. As you can see, CWIT was well represented. Congratulations to all these students who were honored last Sunday by COET. Right, before we leave, I need to say have just a word to those of you who are graduating and leaving us. We really don't want you to go too far. Remember us here at CWIT. Keep in touch, please. Be sure to give us an email address where we can reach you once your UMBC address no longer works, and we'll be asking, for you, asking you for that over and over, several times, until you give it to us between now and when you leave. Join our alumni Facebook page. It's a very fun group. 
Check out Retrievers Connect, which is UMBC's new professional networking platform just for UMBC alums. Um, you're very familiar with our networking events, fall networking, uh, spring into leadership. You've, you've been doing them for years, right? It's time for you to come in on the other side. So when you get an invitation, come, come participate in our networking events. You know how much fun they are. Um, look for our alumni survey, survey this summer where we're going to gather tons of information about where you're going and fill it out for us. Um, because we want to know where you're headed and what part of the world you've chosen to make your mark. We want to stay in touch and we have lots of ways to do that. Is it Jamie? Jamie, would you like to come up and say a few words? No. <laughs> so Prof G has arrived. <laughs> This is what happens when you go to Washington. <laughs> um, so again, I apologize for being so late. Uh, I want to thank CWIT and those who nominated me for the mentor award. Um, I think that like everything else and the things that I mentor in, you have this imposter syndrome like, what did I do to deserve this? Um, but in the end, uh, you know, I have to say one thing that I do as a mentor or be seen as a mentor is that and I hope that my mentees and those who mentor, please mentor, is that we try to make it better for others. Um, and as I went through my journey, I'm like, <laughs> I feel like I've just like ran like a, a mile here with the heels. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, I think the one thing is, is that you don't take mentorship. I don't take mentorship for granted. I, you know, I too, like, you know, we all have our struggles. And the one thing is, is that I, I know that without the wonderful mentors in my life, Dr. Bowman, Carolyn, other people, there's so many people you can call mentor. And I can't say enough that the big thing I do is want to make it better for others. And to breathe life, to build love, to build relationships is probably one of the most important things about the role that you're in. All of you are going to be amazing people. I mean, and you're going to plant seeds along the way. And they're going to look at you. I mean, I see a lot of my students sitting here right now looking at me right now who are in my classes. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but I know that what it felt like to feel alone and lost as engineers and as computer scientists and, and the struggles you went through. And, to be real and to be authentic is one of the best things in the world. And I was scared to just reveal myself, failing classes, going through life, failing even, even my qualifiers when I got my PhD. Um, <laughs> I, oh, big secret, look at you all like gasping over there. Um, yeah, I, but I did it again. Um, and I did it again until I passed. <laughs> um, but <laughs> see, you all can be a PhD, look at me. Um, so one thing is, is that I just want you all to take away from you to be authentic, be yourselves, and give back and to be one for one, which you want to be for many. Be one, and that's what I always live by. It's something that somebody told to me. And as I went through pain and suffering and sometimes feeling alone and all the different challenges I faced, having people who can be authentic to me was how I got through everything that I did and I continue to do. So mentorship is probably the most biggest thing that really makes a difference in somebody else's life and it's the most powerful thing you can do, whether it be formal or informal. So please do and consider being a mentor if you're not uh, for CWIT, right? Erica is like, I'm sure in the audience going yes, um, and, C and Cindy um, and Carolyn. We always need good mentors and, and for my students, continue to be authentic and never be afraid to be who you are. That is all I have to say. Sorry, I don't write anything formal, but thank you for being so patient. Thank you, Carolyn. So thank you all and have a wonderful time. And I'll send it out. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.
That brings us to the end of our program. Thank you so much, so much, each of you here in the room, um, each of you watching via live stream, thank you. And those future watchers who will wa be watching the recording, thank you. Um, we appreciate everything you all do to support CWIT. And we appreciate you coming tonight. There is a reception starting right now um, in the engineering atrium. Just go out to the lobby, hang a right, and go into the next building. Um, it should be obvious where it is. Uh, please join us at the reception. You'll be able to see a video that Erica has made um, showing off all our graduates and their plans and their accomplishments. And you'll also be able to congratulate those um, that we've honored here tonight in person. I hope to see you there. Thank you. Good night.